Okay, one of the most exciting parts of building an aircraft is onto the panel. Today we'll start cutting for the various switches and the avionics and uh, fit the panel to the aircraft. So I'll show you how we did it. Hey, I'll show you on the ELT cutout here that we have taped off. So we just drill a hole in the middle and enlarge that with a unibit because we're going to cut this out with a uh, jigsaw. And you can see there's number 30 holes in each corner as well. So we get a rounded corner instead of a sharp corner. So make sure you put the tape on there because it can mar the aluminum quite significantly. This is a 63 thou aluminum. So you won't be able to use a, a nibbler like we showed you on the last video. Just takes a time and a little bit of process to eventually have it cut out and then we're going to take a file and sandpaper to it to make it look nice. It is quite loud and like I said you're going to have to tape it off so that you don't scar the aluminum too bad. And there we have our cutout for the ELT. It's going to take a little bit of trial and fitting. So some filing, some sanding try to put the part in, and then probably file a little bit more. And it's just an iterative process so that you don't make the hole too large. Of course, you see the top of the panel there is not, not yet cut, it's not rounded. We'll do that later. Though so we test fit the ELT, if it doesn't fit, we just pop it back out, take a little file to it again, Till we're happy with the fit. And a round file with the corners. And there's our ELT. Now we need to drill the mounting holes in it. That bottom one there is where a couple switches are going to go. You see holes for nut plates that we're going to use click bond nut plates on. And the layout of the panel here is such that the edge of those two parts is going to line up with each other. So it just takes a little bit of math and figuring out exactly where the holes need to be so that you get a nice pleasing look when it's all done. So those two edges will line up nicely. So we'll just tape the ELT off and then we'll drill it. Number 28 for number 6 screws. Be careful not to mar the actual unit itself. And even though they're number 28 holes, the number 30 Clicos still work reasonably well. Sometimes they do pop loose. So just make sure it's actually holding the part. Alternatively, you could put a screw in it right away so it doesn't move. Alright, so there's our final installation on the left side, the nice lineup of the switches and the ELT. We'll do the same on the right side, as well as matching the left and the right, so that we get a nice symmetrical shape to the panel. So we see that top line there is then continued over to the left side. So not only do the parts sit nicely together, nicely lined up, um, but when, in this case here, when we install this USB, uh, it is going to line up with the left side of the panel. So we have documents for the installation manuals that tell us, but we just make sure that they're correct. And again, a little bit of figuring out a little bit of math of where that hole exactly is going to end up, such that when, in this case, the USB is installed, it's going to line up with the right-hand side of those switches. Tape it all up like we did before getting ready for the jigsaw. And we take our unibit and do the same process that we did for the ELT on the other side. Now there are no mounting screws on this USB connector. So I'm gonna intentionally make it a tiny bit undersized so it might take a little bit more filing 
to get it to fit because we definitely don't want it to be too large. It's just a press fit into that rectangular cutout. So one of my favorite parts of building the aircraft is doing the panel. It's an exciting time, making it nice and pleasing, nice layout, nice and symmetrical. So there's our G3X touch in the middle with the lights, We've got our switches. We'll go over a bit more on this on the next video when we start talking about all the G3X components and all the switches that are in there. Now for actually fitting the panel. So on our installation, that sub panel there, there's a little bit of a gap between the edge of the fuselage and the sub panel. The top is all fine, but on the left side and the right side, there's a little bit of a gap. So we could create a pattern so that we can cut out the instrument panel so that we actually cover up that gap when everything is finally riveted together. Or we can just, in this case, put the panel in place and it's quite a bit larger than what it needs to be. And then we'll just go behind the panel. We'll close down that aluminum skin and then mark where it ends up being on the instrument panel and we'll trim that on the bandsaw and then file it nicely. Same on the right side. And you see it's gonna take up that little gap there, which is about an eighth of an inch or so. So there we have it cut and trimmed, nicely filed and sanded down and it fits nicely. Now we need to cut out the same holes in that sub panel there, keeping in mind that there may be fasteners and nut plates to clear as well. So the holes in the sub panel might be a little bit larger. And there's the final fit, taking up that little gap and when it's all riveted together later, it'll look nice. Well now for a little surprise for you. I managed to find this beauty. This is a 1969 Dodge Dart. Been shopping for for quite a while. Just the opportunity arose and got lucky enough to, uh, to buy it. So there's another addition to the hangar and another fun little toy for next summer. Hope you enjoy that video. Build yourself something, take it for a rip. I'll be gone for two to three weeks and I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.